guys. I hope you all are having a great weekend. I'm totally in my PJs this morning, Sunday morning. My husband, the two girls are sick. I was sick on Friday and that's one of the luxuries of being a trader is you can do this from a bathrobe. And on Sunday mornings when I'm feeling lazy, everyone is sick, you know, being snuggled up when it's negative 19 Celsius outside is awesome. But when we do the Modern Trader Summit, it's gonna be about 80 degrees up here, rocking it up in Montreal. So definitely check it out. Just go right here, sign up for the updates if you want to know um, when and where it's going to be held. I uh, should be locking that in place this week. I'm very excited about that. And if you know anybody that might be interested in sponsoring the event, I have a couple great people that are gonna be sponsoring it, a great broker, as well as potentially other tools, you know, alerting software, uh, charting software, that sort of stuff that's looking into sponsoring it. So if you know anybody that might be interested or you have a company that you would like to sponsor it as well, please let me know. Just shoot me an email at carpayprofit.com at gmail.com and I also wanted to bring up my blog CJ and trade you guys have heard me talk about it lots you know it's got invaluable tools um, I do have my watch list that I post on here every morning I do it as I'm updating it I update it as a post and then I wanted to go over because I always do the review of the indexes right I started doing that someone had asked me to do that and it's a great way to get an overall picture of what is going on in the market so you know, it was Thanksgiving week on the 21st, and I was talking about how we were bouncing off of this trend line down here, right? It was the bottom of these two candles, and this trend line has been acting as support. Well, sure enough, you know, Black Friday, we bounced off of it, and then we ran up, and I did another post, and I said, hey, the market's teasing us. So we touched right down here, we bounced all the way up here, and now, guess what? Let's go, we'll go ahead and get into it. All right, trading view doesn't like all my stuff that's open right here that purple line again this is now our third test many times when we see a third test right we had one two three so if this momentum is continuing let me go ahead and make this a big chart for a second then it could very well break down and then we're going to see massive downward trend also something that I found was really interesting is we have the death cross that's happening now on the SPY. You know, this is the 50 day moving average crossing the 200 day moving average, which is usually a good indication of downward momentum and it will continue. Let me pull it back into all the indices for you. So we have the SPY, which is the, e the SPY is the ETF for the S&P 500, QQQ, the ETF for NASDAQ, IWM for the Russell 2000. So those are all ETFs and Amazon. So Facebook, we already had the death cross. Uh, Apple, we had the death cross. We've had it just this past week. These are daily charts here. The D stands for day. This is four days ago. We had the death cross on QQQ. IWM death cross right here. Let's pull up the Dow Jones DIA. So Dow Jones, it looks like it could be setting up here for death cross, right? So we've got uh, about $3 and 45 cents before it happens. Amazon is setting up for it. Doesn't like everything that I have open. Amazon is setting up for it. We are, you know, 17 points away, which Amazon in general can move 70 to 100 points in a day. So that's looking like that could easily happen as well. So it's really looking like the market overall is setting up for a bigger downward trend. Uh, when I was looking back here at the SPY on the monthly chart, right, we pull this back. This does not look good at all, right? We've got new highs, massive down, bounce, massive down. Is it going to stop here at that trend line or is it gonna continue? In my opinion, I'm seeing, all right, we've got massive volume on the downside, somewhat good volume, you know, it's bigger than we had the same amount of volume back here at the low back here when it reversed, yet we've had more downward and a lower low almost and we're not seeing big volume coming in. So that is leading me to believe that this could go down further before we have massive volume stepping in. You see, here is that low, massive volume. Here is the low. Of course, the low of this candle is 259. The low is right here, if you guys can see it. 259.85. We are four points away on the SPY, so roughly 440 on the index. So, you know, keep that in mind. 
when we start to see the volume coming in, that could be a great indicator. You know, I'm thinking, hey, they sold it off, they bought, they bounced it up, they sold off again, or excuse me, they bought up here, sold off, and now we've got more selling happening. So that's just my personal opinion. It could go any which way. Um, I'm definitely looking for Amazon to go down further as this one is primed, you know? This one could easily go down and set a new low right down here. It's been trending. We had a, a bounce here, 1800, then we had a high of 1784 and 1778. So it is setting lower highs on these bounces and lower lows as well. So we're sort of in a, a channel right here going down. So it could go down further, you know, 1390 that way. And we shall see. All right, let's go ahead and get, oh, I wanted to also show you guys. I was going to show you, I tweet all of this sort of stuff. If you don't want, follow me on Twitter, Airplane Jane. Um, I've got all the indices here with those H patterns. You can pretty much check it out. So I do put good little tidbits. Also posted this in doing my prep work. The market is pretty much red except for the utility sector. And also we have KMB on um, the, or, oh, over here, KMB under consumer goods. So definitely check that out. All right, so getting into my watch list for the week, as always, guys, I used to have my Series 7, but I'm no longer current, so please do your due diligence. These are all my personal opinions on stocks, so do your due diligence, trade with proper risk management, and go ahead and profit. These are all volatile stocks that should have action going into Monday. If the momentum continues in the direction that it's happening, the longs are potential longs and the shorts are potential shorts. However, they are going to move one way or the other on Monday. So keep them on watch and watch the support and resistance for levels to be broken as far as momentum to continue. All right, first one we have on the list is Domo. You can see bounced off of the 50 day moving average, had positive earnings. When we go back to the 15 minute chart, I would say supports right here at 20 and resistance at 2055. And you can see this one has 13 million in the float and 43.8% short float volume on Friday. On the year, it did break this downward trend and it is running up. So I would say, look, we could go up to easily 23, potentially before resistance, excuse me, 22 before resistance. After that, potentially 23, if it were to really scream up, maybe up to the 27th area. Uh, so that's the potential upside for Domo. If we're looking at it, all-time high for them is 28.86. All right. So if it does break, you know, let's say, hey, why not? Let's go put a little alert right here. Alert breaking out 23.62, crossing up. Great. It will shoot me a text and an email to let me know if that one breaks out. Love that aspect of trading view. All right. Next one is TLND. Bring it to our 15-minute chart. This one bounced up and it is set support at 4038 with resistance of 4103. And on the yearly chart, let's pull it back for daily, it does have this nice gap here potentially to fill. So if we can go ahead, we did, the averages are starting to curl up, you know, and it's got good momentum going. If it can break the 45 area, I think we're definitely looking up to 50 and then, you know, next $5 increments up 52.50-55 area for TLND. So that one is one to keep on watch. It could also go up right here to 45 and go back down and tank down. So keep it on watch. Levels again are 40.38 and 41.03 with 17.5 million in the float and 29.56% short float on Friday. Next we have IMDZ. IMDZ, same scenario. We've got this gap that's happening here. We had earnings back here. It looks like it's heading to a bottom. Averages are curling up. It, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Averages are curling up. It did break the 50 day moving average. We've got the 200 day moving average up here at 333 and a gap from 205 up to 275. So nice 70% move, 30% of the stock. So keep it on watch. The uh, support I have is 191 and resistance of 205 with 24 million in the float and 29.47% short float volume. Next on the list is OZM. So we have OZM. I have support of 141 and resistance of 158. Again, same scenario. These are all stocks that are curling up. They've broken out. They're breaking the 50-day moving average. They are lower float and well, this one has 136 million in it, but it does have this upward 
potential up to 192 40 cents from the uh, you know from this close so this one is on watch. It does have 56.95% short float volume on Friday. Last one for the long list is auto, auto web. So if we pull this one back, this one has had some massive drops, right? Down from 25, this is the five year chart, weekly right here. So this has had massive drops. However, earnings here, it dropped, when it ran up, dropped again. This is last March. So it looks like the let's see we've just had earnings back in november so potentially in february it could drop again based on what's happened here let's go back over here see october february it was pretty pretty flat here but i would keep it on watch because it does look like it's curling up it does have 51.36 percent short float volume it did look like it set a bottom down here around two, starting to curl up, closed over the averages. And massive volume here. I was looking at it, I was like, this is crazy. Look at this three big days of volume. That is insane. What is going on, right? What is going on with this to go ahead and get this? There's no news since earnings. Something is coming out. The volume is stepping in. So what else is coming out on this one? Right? The volume will always tell you before it happens, except for earnings, when you'll see the massive volume. But many times you'll see earning, you'll see volume before earnings because people know something like potentially right here. All right, so support 209, resistance 220, I would say up to 239. If it wanted to run all the way up to 200 day moving average, probably not that far. I would say it probably go up to about $3 first and then up to 200 day moving average if it really squeezes. It does have 10 million in the float and 51.36% short float volume on Friday. Get into the shorts for the week. So big lots pummeled with earnings. I would say for support 30.55 and resistance of 31.17. This had massive downward action. Uh, it does have 39.9 million in the float, so keep that one on watch. This is a five-year low, I believe. No, not yet. We still have low access down here to 26.23. So it could go down another $5 before we find support and bounce up from there. Next one, COO, another one. Massive drop down. Oh, we are on the weekly. So it did hit the 50 period moving average, 244.28 on the weekly chart broke down just below that. Let's go back to our day here. And it broke through the 200 day moving average as well. So keep this one on watch. It could easily drop down here, sort of gap fill down to this 237.95 for the downward side. Uh, for support, I do have 243.01 up to 248 for resistance. It does have 48 million in the float. Next one on the watch list for shorts is five and below. and We've got 96, excuse me, 95.51 for support and 97.01 for resistance. It did break below that 200 day moving average is the light blue, 96.82 right here. And it's got this gap below. So if this one drops down, look at that $14 to the downside of gap space to be filled to the bottom. So keep that one on watch. It does have 54 million in the float. Next one we have is Ulta. Again, massive drop down on earnings. It did touch the 200 day moving average and bounce back up. This one was on my watch list on Friday. So if you'd gotten it, you would have known, hey, you could have gotten in up here when it broke down through the resistance and taken a nice $20 move to the downside on that stock. If you'd had 100 shares, what's that? $2,000 right there? Nice, right? Okay, so break this down. We've got support 254.45, resistance of 258.99, 256, 57 million in the float. I don't know why it keeps doing that today. I got to clean something up apparently or message them and find out why. Last one on the short list is MTN. Look at that. Death cross setting up, right? And we had a massive drop. Look at that. 200 day moving average all the way down. Look at that. 48 points right here. So keep this one on watch, earnings, right? So I would say support of 217.92 and resistance of 224.86 for the watch. And let's see, five years, looks like it could go down to 210, actually 205 before it finds support. If that does break, it might come down to the 200 period moving average on the weekly of 177. They do have 39 million in the float, so keep this one on watch as well.
could have some great short opportunities coming up since the market is on a short bias. Um, you know, if you do have stocks in your portfolio that you're holding long term, you could potentially talk to a broker as well about potentially using options to hedge against your position and make money on the downside while still holding that position. That's just a thought. Uh, also, for longer term swings, I have CPRX. Oops, CPRX, not Z. <clears throat> right here. So this one does have potential on the weekly it looks like it's found support right it's bounced off of this 217 so I would use that as my mental stop 217 but it looks like it's starting to curl up we've got some volume it's sold off but then we have some volume and it's sort of bottoming out here so that's a potential long um, and then we also have like I said KMG is in the consumer goods area FSTA is a uh, consumer staples ETF so that's just a thought for longer term because if the market does tank many times money will go into consumer staples because people are always needing to buy things right your regular goods like toilet paper toothpaste soap all that good stuff on the long list as well for potential longer term holding I mean look at this this one has gone from oops let's pull it back even further five-year all all-time chart right so this has gone from $20 down to 61 cents. So this one has potential longer term swing to it. It is starting, it looks like potentially it found support. So if you were to get in here, I would say go ahead and use that 50 area as a support level to watch for it to be broken. But this one has potential long term growth since gold's overall is definitely, I mean, if you look at Nugget, this is a triple velocity ETF for gold. So this has slowly been going up. There's also JNUG. We're starting to see gold somewhat coming off of the bottom down here. Now, if it doesn't hold, I would say get out because it could definitely go lower. So definitely put, you know, an 11 cent stop on 61 cents. I would position accordingly and know that that's the mental stop, but I'm definitely taking smaller positions and adding to it of ego in my 401k for a longer term holding. Because look, if it goes from 61 cents up to 90 cents, you've already made 50% profit. And that looks like it's a pretty easy move. That's really annoying. I gotta find out why that's happening. All right, guys, as always, have a great week ahead. Trade with proper risk management, car pay profit, lock those profits one trade at a time. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to hearing from you. So shoot me an email or text or comment or tweet. I will get back to you. Have a great week ahead. Bye.